Mr. Speaker, Mr. President, members of the legislature and fellow citizens, together we have made Florida the freest state in these United States. While so many around the country have consigned the people's rights to the graveyard, Florida has stood as freedom's vanguard. In Florida, we have protected the right of our citizens to earn a living, provided our businesses with the ability to prosper, fought back against unconstitutional federal mandates, and ensured our kids have the opportunity to thrive. Florida has become the escape hatch for those chafing under authoritarian, arbitrary, and seemingly never-ending mandates and restrictions. Even today, across the nation, we see students denied an education due to reckless, politically motivated school closures, workers denied employment due to heavy-handed mandates, and Americans denied freedoms due to a co coercive biomedical apparatus. These unprecedented policies have been as ineffective as they have been destructive. They are grounded more in blind adherence to Faucian declarations than they are in the constitutional traditions that are the foundation of free nations. Florida is a free state. We reject the biomedical security state that curtails liberty, ruins livelihoods, and divides our society. And we will protect the rights of individuals to live their lives free from the yoke of restrictions and mandates. Florida has stood strong as the rock of freedom, and it is upon this rock that we must build Florida's future. Now, fortunately, we're going to be able to confront our challenges with an incredibly favorable budget outlook and with strong economic performance that has withstood unfavorable national headwinds. My recommended budget of $99.7 billion has more than $15 billion in reserves, one of the largest surpluses in the history of our state. Florida's revenues have exceeded estimates by billions of dollars over the past year and a half, and December's revenues came in at more than $500 million over the latest monthly estimate. And this is all being done with no income tax and the lowest per capita tax burden in the United States. Job creation in Florida is far exceeding the national average, and our labor force has increased six times faster than the nation's as a whole. We also lead the nation in business formations, which have increased by 61% since I took office in 2019. And in 2021, Florida has already seen 114,000 more new businesses than second place California, even though California has a population that is 40% larger than ours. Freedom works. <laughs> In 
And while our economy is the envy of the nation and our state is well prepared to guard against future economic turmoil, the truth is that our nation is facing economic problems stemming from reckless federal policies, especially the most sustained inflation our country has witnessed in decades. The federal government has borrowed and printed unprecedented sums of money, and the bill is coming due. Inflation is an invisible tax on Floridians. It represents a pay cut for individuals and for families alike. And one of the ways families have felt the pinch has been in significantly higher gas prices. To help alleviate this burden for Florida families, I'm proposing a $1 billion gas tax holiday to help reduce prices at the pump. If Washington, D.C. won't change course, then we have a responsibility to step up on behalf of our Floridians. Education represents a major pillar of Florida's future. And I'm happy to note that Florida is again ranked number three for K through 12 achievement in the latest Education Week Quality Counts ratings. We have worked hard to keep schools open, to increase teacher compensation, to promote workforce education, and to protect the rights of parents. In pockets across America, schools are closing once again. These closures are enormously destructive and they will not be tolerated in the state of Florida. Florida has led the way in putting our kids first. In the summer of 2020, when it wasn't fashionable, we made clear that kids needed to be in school. And we faced opposition from hysterical media, from unions and the politicians they control. We even faced lawsuits aiming to close the schools. But we would not allow fear of po or politics to harm our kids. We were right and they were wrong. And millions of families in Florida are better for it. While it's important to embrace high academic standards and to measure student achievement, the FSA test is not the best way to do it. I'm proposing the elimination of the FSA and replacing it with periodic progress monitoring. This will lead to meaningful feedback for parents and teachers and will reduce the amount of time dedicated to testing, leaving more time for learning. This reform will be better for students, it'll be better for teachers, it'll be better for parents, and it will help Florida remain a leader in education reform. Over the past two years, we've increased the average minimum salary for school teachers by more than $6,000. And last year, we pro provided $1,000 bonuses to every public school teacher and principal in the state of Florida. Joining us here today is, is Brittany Duquesne, who's a teacher at Lakewood Elementary in Pinellas County. Stand up, be recognized. <laughs> Now, she has benefited from the bonus and the salary increases that we have worked to provide, and the experience at Lakewood Elementary shows why this is important. Brittany and her colleagues took the school from an F grade in 2019 to an A grade in 2021.
let's continue the progress by further increasing teacher pay and by approving an additional round of $1,000 bonus. It's the right thing to do, and it'll show folks that we appreciate the hard work they've done, particularly over the last two very difficult years. Florida, under the legislature's leadership, enacted a Parents' Bill of Rights, and we reject the notion that parents shouldn't have a say in what their kids are learning in school. Indeed, Florida law should provide parents with the right to review the curriculum used in their children's schools. We should provide parents with recourse so that state standards are enforced, such as Florida's prohibition on infusing subjects with critical race theory in our classrooms. Keisha King is a mother from Duval County, Florida, who has joined Stand Up, who has joined Moms, Keisha has joined moms all across Florida and even America to speak out against divisive ideologies like CRT. These moms are standing up for a principle that is the policy of the state of Florida. Our tax dollars should not be used to teach kids to hate our country or to hate each other. Florida's public college and university system is ranked number one in the nation yet again. Higher education must remain affordable for Florida families. I will not support any tuition increases at Florida's colleges and universities, and I oppose cutting Bright Future scholarships, which have benefited many Florida families over the years. Now, as proud as we are of the quality and affordability of Florida's higher education system, a four-year education at a traditional brick and ivy school isn't the only pathway to success. Over the past three years, Florida's added more than 50 new apprenticeship programs. The credentials earned through our workforce initiatives have paved the way for employment in a variety of fields like aviation, logistics, and welding. These are as valuable and as honorable endeavors as attending August universities, and they deserve our full support. And I can tell you, Florida's dedicated focus on the skilled trades will help expand the state's manufacturing footprint. We've already seen businesses move here from other states, and this is one of the reasons why. We should also be actively encouraging businesses to repatriate production back to America from foreign countries. Do we really want our supply chains to be captive to the whims of a country such as communist China? Let's bring these jobs back to the state of Florida. Our state's economic security is also linked to the stewardship of our natural resources. We Floridians are heirs to a unique environment that makes our state the envy of the nation for fishing, boating, and other outdoor activities. Three years ago, we promised bold action to safeguard Florida's natural resources, to improve water quality, and to restore the Everglades. And with the support of the legislature, especially the support of Speaker of the House Chris Sprouls and Senate President Wilton Simpson, we have secured historic funding to support these efforts. Since January of 2019, 42 Everglades restoration projects have broken ground, hit a major milestone, or finished construction. Record... <laughs> Record... 
record funding has gone to conduct research and secure technologies to mitigate blue-green algae and red tide. And the state has now dedicated streams of revenue to promote coastal resiliency and water quality improvements. We've even made enormous strides in removing invasive Burmese pythons from the Everglades. In the gallery today is actually our reigning python king, Charlie Docton. Where are you at? Stand up. Now, the previous year's winner netted nine pythons. Charlie caught a whopping 41 pythons in our latest statewide contest. <laughs> we resolved to leave our unique natural inheritance to God better than we found it, and we are fulfilling that pledge. We will also continue to honor our commitment to safe communities. Florida is a law and order state. We will not allow law enforcement to be defunded, bail to be eliminated, criminals to be prematurely released from prison, or prosecutors to ignore the law. I've never seen someone jump to their feet as quick as the Attorney General just did when I talked about soft on crime prosecutors. The fact is these soft on crime policies have been tried in communities throughout the country to disastrous results. Crime has skyrocketed, morale for police officers has plummeted, and the quality of life in some of our cities has been destroyed. We in Florida have stood by the men and women of law enforcement. Not only do we reject defunding law enforcement, we enacted $1,000 bonuses for every single sworn law enforcement firefighter and EMT in the entire state of Florida, and I'm asking the legislature to re-up these bonuses for another year. They all deserve it. Serving in law enforcement is a noble calling. We will not allow our officers to be smeared by reckless politicians or corporate media. My proposal is to increase pay for state law enforcement by up to 25% and to provide $5,000 signing bonuses to law enforcement personnel who either transfer to or begin their careers in Florida will spark a tidal wave of qualified professionals seeking employment at agencies throughout our state. And I'm happy today to be joined by Officer Yehuda Topper from the North Miami Beach Police Department. Stand up and be recognized. Officer Topper took his talents to North Miami Beach from New York, where he's involved in law enforcement, and he's the first Sabbath ob observant Orthodox Jewish police officer to be hired under the current rules. And so, welcome to Florida. Thank you for your service.
And let there be no mistake to all who wear the uniform, the state of Florida stands with you. Now, law and order also means having strong borders. And we have a crisis at the U.S.-Mexico border over the past year that's witnessed staggering amounts of illegal migration and a massive influx of narcotics such as fentanyl. And rather than defend our sovereignty and enforce the border, the federal government has released hundreds of thousands of illegal aliens to communities across the U.S., shipping them to Florida at alarming rates, including by sending clandestine flights in the dark of night. Now, as a state, we cannot be party to what is effectively a massive human smuggling operation run by the federal government. Companies who are facilitating the movement of illegal aliens from the southern border to Florida should be held accountable, including by paying restitution to the state for all the costs they are imposing on our communities. I'm also requesting funds so that when the feds dump people here in Florida illegally, the state can reroute them to the states that have sanctuary policies. Florida should not be made to bear the burden of our federal government's lawless open border policies. Now, the rule of law also means that our citizens have the ability to participate in elections that are secure and transparent. It is Orwellian doublespeak to invoke the concept of voting rights to mean ballot harvesting or prohibiting voter ID or having taxpayers fund elections. Those are political concepts that erode the integrity of our elections. Ballot harvesting has no place in the state of Florida, and we need to increase penalties for those who do it. We also need to ensure that supervisors clean the voting rolls, that only citizens are registered to vote, and that mail ballots only go to those who actually request them before each individual election. And to ensure that elections are conducted in accordance with the rule of law, I propose an election integrity unit whose sole focus will be the enforcement of Florida's election laws. This will facilitate the faithful, faithful enforcement of election laws and will provide Floridians with the confidence that their vote will matter. Our constitutional rights have been under assault on a number of fronts over the last few years, and Florida has stood tall in defending the rights of its people. A free society requires the ability to have robust discussions about issues of public importance, and yet, today, big, big tech companies that control so much of the discourse have used their platforms to elevate preferred narratives and disciple dissent serving as a de facto council of censors. Now, Florida was the first state to legislate protections for its citizens, uh, and we need to build off what we did last session. These same companies are making a fortune by selling user data. Floridians should not have their data utilized by big tech without providing affirmative consent for them to do so. And I urge the legislature to enact protections for the data privacy of all Floridians.
I also recommend that the legislature strengthen protections for Floridian Second Amendment rights. These important rights should not depend on the whims of politicians who reject the existence of those rights in the first place. Finally, we have an opportunity to strengthen protections for the right to life itself, without which the other rights mean little. Protecting life does not end with the unborn, must also include efforts to promote adoption and foster care so that all Floridians have a fair chance in life. Florida has 4,000 more licensed caregivers than we did in 2019, and I'm proposing additional funds to foster parents in next year's budget. And Nobody has done more to support Florida's children than Florida's first lady, who is with us here today. First Lady's Pathway to Prosperity program has served more than 17,000 families in need through a collaboration between DCF and the faith community. Now, on behalf of our family, I want to personally thank everyone who sent prayers and well wishes for Casey's recovery from breast cancer. She is strong. She is resilient. She has a husband and three kids who love her dearly. And I can tell you this, 2022 is the year where she will be cancer free. Now, when it comes to health, Florida has understood how important it is to put our seniors first. And we have done that time and again over the past two years. Most recently, we led the nation in raising awareness of and expanding access to monoclonal antibody treatments. This effort has helped thousands of seniors keep them out of the hospital and to save many lives. We have an example of that here with us today. Wally and Doris Cortez, where are you guys? Are you there? Wally, I, it's okay, we see you. All right, now. <laughs> Wally and Doris are from Cape Coral. Wally is a World War II and a Korean War veteran. And they... <laughs> they have been married for 62 years. And when they recently when they recently contracted COVID-19, they utilized monoclonal antibody treatments to make full recovery. God bless you both, and we're so glad you're in the state of Florida.
On June 24th of last year, Floridians were shocked to wake up to the news of a catastrophic partial collapse at the Champlain Tower South Condominium Complex. First responders rescued dozens of people from an adjoining tower, and they searched a massive pile of rubble for survivors for weeks. Our first responders poured their heart and soul into the rescue efforts. Ray Jadala is here from Miami-Dade Fire and Rescue. He's the assistant chief uh, at Miami-Dade Fire Rescue. He helped lead those efforts, and I can tell you those folks who were working that uh, was very emotional, it was very draining, uh, but you guys were there, and anytime we have problems, we know you'll be there. So we thank Ray for his service and all the members of the urban search and rescue teams that worked tirelessly during those very, very difficult days. of the 98 victims who perished in the collapse has been devastating. The loss has been incalculable. One of the victims, families here today, was 92-year-old Hilda Noriega. Now, her son is the North Bay Village Chief of Police, Carlos Noriega. Uh, her grandkids are here. If you guys could stand and be recognized. was the matriarch of an amazing family and is dearly missed by those who knew her and she's emblematic of the huge losses that we suffered by losing so many special people. The grief and anguish endured by the Noriega family and the other families of Surfside has been overwhelming uh, and it reminds us that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He saves those whose spirits are crushed. Now our state should provide support for an appropriate memorial so that future generations will never forget the legacies of the victims of that terrible, tragic day. The Surfside tragedy reminds us that you never know what tomorrow will bring. Don't take anything for granted and make the most out of each and every day. We have 60 days to work together to build upon our rock of freedom. Lost time is never found again, so seize the moment and be thankful that God has blessed us to live and serve in America's Liberty Outpost, the free state of Florida. Thank you. God bless you all. Appreciate it.